Oh, hello there. I'm Bill Chan. I'm Nima Kung. I'm Ben Chan. In this class, I'll read to all of you. Chapter 4, Section 1 of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Ask. Ah. Oh. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Arthur Conan Doyle. Chapter 4, Section 1. We were seated at breakfast one morning. My wife and I. When the maid brought in a telegram. It was from Sherlock Holmes and ran in this way. Have you a couple of days to spare? Tragedy. Shall be glad if you will come with me. Air and scenery perfect. What do you say? Terror, said my wife, looking across at me. I really don't know what to say. Well, as to the wood, do your work for you. You have been looking a little pale lately. I think that the change would do you good. And you are always so interested in Mr. I should be ungrateful if I were. Nothing. Seeing what I gained through one of them, I answered. But if I am to go, I must pack at once. Me a prompt and ready traveller. My wants were few and simple. Phyllis. Rattling away to Paddington Station. Sherlock Holmes was pacing up and down the platform. It's tall. Ah. Oh. It is really very good of you to come. What then, said he. It makes a considerable difference to me. Having someone with me on him I can fairly rely. Though Colade is always either worthless or ill-spiced. Had with him. Among these he rummaged and read, with intervals of note-taking and of meditation, until we were past reading. The Ruck. Have you heard anything of the case? he asked. Not a word. The London press has not had very full accounts. Particulars. It seems. From what I gather. But it is profoundly true. Singularity is almost invariably a clue. The more featureless and commonplace a crime is, the more difficult it is to bring it home. In this case, however, it is a murder. Well, it is conjectured to be so. Uh, explain the state of things to you as far as I have been able to understand it in a very few words Boscombe Valley is a country district not very far from us in Hampshire the largest landed proprietor in that part is a Mr. John Turner he made his money in Australia and returned some years ago to the old country of the farms which he held, that of Hathaway, was let to Mr. Charles McCarthy. He was also an ex-Australian. The men had known each other in the colonies, to so as near each other as possible. Turner was apparently the richer man. So McCarthy became his tenant but still remained. It seems upon terms of perfect equality, as they were frequently together. McCarthy had one son, a lad of 18, and Turner had an only daughter of the same age, but neither of them had wives living. They were tired lives of the neighbourhood. McCarthy kept his servants a man and a girl. Turner had a considerable household. 
some half dozen at the least. That is as much as I have been able to gather about the families. Now for the facts. On June 3rd. That is. On Monday last. The Boscombe Pool. Down the Boscombe Valley. He had been out with his serving men in the morning at Ross. And he had told the man that he must hurry. As he had an appointment of importance to keep at three. From that appointment he never came back alive. From Hathley farmhouse to the Buscombe Pool is a quarter of a mile. And two people saw him as he passed over this ground. One was an old woman. Whose name is not mentioned. And the other was William Carter. A gamekeeper and employee of Mr. Turner. Both these witnesses deposed that Mr. McCarthy was walking alone. The gamekeeper adds that within a few minutes of the seeing Mr. McCarthy Passy had seen his son, Mr. James McCarthy, going the same way with the gun under his arm. To the best of his belief, the father was actually in sight at the time and the son was following him. Tragedy that had occurred. The two McCarthy's were seen after the time when William Carter, the gamekeeper, lost sight of them. The Buscombe Pool is thickly wooded round, with just a fringe of grass and a reed round the edge. A girl of 14, Patience Morin, who is the daughter of the lodge keeper of the Buscombe Valley estate, was in one of the woods picking flowers. She states that while she was there she saw at the border of the wood and close by the lake, Mr. McCarthy and his son, and that they appeared to be having a violent quarrel. She heard Mr. McCarthy the elder using very strong language to his son. And she saw the latter raise up his hand as if to strike his father. When she reached home that she had left the two Mukadis quarrelling near Buscombe Pool. And that she was afraid that they were going to fight. She had hardly said the words when young Mr. Dead in the wood. And to ask for the help of the lodge keeper. To be continued.